In this video I'm going to take a look at the mean value theorem and specifically the mean value theorem for derivatives. Later on in your study of calculus you will learn that there is a mean value theorem for integrals. Okay. Usually the textbooks just call this first one the mean value theorem. Um, I'm just kind of specifying derivatives since I'm currently making videos that deal with derivatives. Alright, so first of all we'll go through the theorem, talk about the things that you need to remember out of it, and then we'll do a couple different examples um, so that you can see how this works. Okay, so the mean value theorem <clears throat> states that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there exists a number c in the open interval <clears throat> from a to b such that the derivative at c is equal to the average rate of change <clears throat> on that interval. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward definition. All right. To verify whether or not the theorem holds, there are a couple of things that you have to check. All right, the part where it says if it's continuous on the closed interval. All right, so you've got to take a look at your function, decide whether or not it's continuous on that closed interval. Okay, then you also have to check to see if it's differentiable on the open interval. All right, so you got to take a look at your function, make that determination. If those two things are true, then you know that the mean value theorem holds. All right, so then you would only need to remember that the derivative at C is going to be equal to that average rate of change. So you can calculate that average rate of change. You can set the derivative equal to it and then solve for your value of C. All right, and then for that C to exist, it has to exist in the open interval from A to B. Okay, so those are your main things that you're going to be looking at in this theorem. All right, now if we do a couple of examples here. All right, let's say that our directions tell us to first verify that the mean value theorem holds, okay, because you should have to do that first anyway. All right, if it does, find all values of C that satisfies the theorem, okay? So on this first example here, I've got f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 6 on the closed interval from 2 to 8. That's what I'm examining. All right, so I need to take a look at this function. All right, if it is a function that you have memorized it's one of your basic functions that you could do a really rough sketch from that's excellent all right if not maybe you could put it in a graphing calculator and look at it all right but this one is simple enough hopefully you recognize the absolute value bars meaning your graph is going to be a v and that little minus six that's on the inside of the function basically just shifts it six to the right so if you can draw a sketch I would recommend doing that so that you can just see what you got here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I know I've got a V shape like that. Okay, now I'm only concerned with the portion of this graph that is from two to eight. So there's two, three, four, five, six. A mm, couple more hash marks out there. Don't think I made it long enough here. There's seven, there's eight. Okay, so I'm only concerned with the portion of the graph that is right there. Let's make that go all the way out to two. All right, so if that comes down to two, and then this goes to eight. Okay, I'm only concerned with this portion of the graph. Okay, now, obviously, a V is continuous on that entire interval there. Um, so it does meet that condition, but it does not meet the condition about being differentiable in the entire thing. Because if you remember, functions that have cusp in them are not differentiable. All right, so right there at x equals 6, the function is not differentiable. Okay, so let's um, note that, all right. Not differentiable at x equals 6. Therefore the mean value theorem does not apply. It doesn't look like not, does not apply. Okay, so I don't have to find any values of C because the theorem itself does not apply right there. And it doesn't apply because it doesn't meet that being differentiable on the open. Okay, so now for my second example, I've got f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. And we're looking on that um, closed interval from 0 to 6. All right, so again, let's take a look at that function. All right, hopefully you recognize this function as being a polynomial curve. All right, all polynomial curves are smooth and continuous everywhere, and they're that, therefore that means that they are differentiable everywhere. Okay, so on this one, I can verify very easily that 
it is going to apply here. So let's make note of what I've just verbally talked about. All right, and our verify, um, f of x is continuous on that closed interval from 0 to 6. All right, f of x is differentiable. on that open interval from 0 to 6. Those are my only two conditions that have to be met for this theorem to apply. So therefore, the mean value theorem applies. OK, so I've definitely verified it. I am good to go. All right, now I need to find, for the second part of this, find all values of c that satisfies the theorem. OK, now, if you remember, all right, we said that the derivative at c has to equal the average rate of change. Okay, the derivative at C has to equal the average rate of change. So let's go ahead and like see if I can't write that down somewhere. Let's just write it down here in red. The derivative at C has to equal the average rate of change. So f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. That's the part that I've got to remember so that I know how to go about finding my value of C. So I can calculate this average rate of change. I can calculate the derivative of that function. Then I can set the two equal and solve for my C. OK, so that's what we're going to do. So let's calculate the average rate of change. OK, so um, a to b, my interval is 0 to 6. So a and b, a is 0, b is 6. OK, so calculating that average rate of change, I would have f of 6 minus f of 0 all over 6 minus 0. All right, so f of 6, taking 6 and plugging it in here, I'd have 36 minus 30. That'd give me 6 plus 4 more. That's going to give me a 10. So then I'm going to have a 10. Plug in 0, 0 minus 0 plus 4. It's going to give me a 4. All right, all over a 6. 10 minus 4 on top is 6 over 6, which is going to give me a 1. So my average rate of change is 1. OK, now let's take this function and calculate its derivative. f prime of c is going to be a pretty straightforward derivative right there. It's going to be a 2x and then a minus 5. OK, so relatively short and easy there on that derivative. OK, now I ought to be able to take these two things, the derivative said to equal to the average rate of change, and solve. OK, so I'm going to do 2x minus 5 equals 1. I'm going to have a 2x equals 6 and x equals 3. OK, all right. Now, oh, it is in terms of c here. I'm going to go through and just re-emphasize what I've just done here. OK, so we've got um, 3 which is definitely in that open interval. So I got to make sure that is true. And then this says that f of 3 equals 1, because that's what I did. I took the derivative, said it equal to 1. All right, so I've definitely found my value c. So let's summarize that. OK, let's uh, summarize that. Let's go back and summarize it in a blue here. All right, so therefore, f prime of 3 equals 1. OK, because I calculated the derivative, said it equal to 1, I got a 3. f prime of 3 equals 1, and x equals 3 is in my open interval from 0 to 6, which is what the theorem said it had to be in that open interval. So therefore, since that equals that, and that equals that, and that, so we can conclude that c equals 3 which is what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to find all values of c. Now that satisfies the theorem. Okay, so nice little um, implementation of how this mean value theorem uh, works. You've got to check to make sure that the theorem holds. <clears throat> You've got to remember that the derivative at c equals that average rate of change. That way you'll know what kind of math to go through. Calculate that average rate of change. Calculate your derivative. Set it equal and solve. All right, and then the 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 and crucial part here is then making sure that that whatever you solve for is in the open interval from 0 to 6. Okay, so um, short little video there on mean value theorem. Really hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it's going to be helpful for you. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.